Hi everyone, I'm The Norm, and today is my knee-jerk reaction review for the film World War Z. Now, I don't know about you, but when I go to the cinema, I want to see one of two things. I want to see a really good film, or a really bad film. Because either way, I'll have fun. Even when I'm watching things at home, that's why I will sit and watch Resident Evil, whatever the latest one is, because I know that it'll be an awful film. What I don't want at the cinema is a film that's just a bit... Ugh, is that right? I don't want to say a, forget, like a forgettable, drab, competently made movie. Now you might be able to guess where I'm going with this review of World War Z. Yes, World War Z is distinctly average in pretty much all ways. Very much produced and dragged along by Brad Pitt. This movie cost £200 million to make and included seven weeks worth of reshoots. Now, you might think, oh, seven, well, what's, what's seven weeks? Seven weeks is about as long as most movies actually shoot for. So this movie had two lives. The first version was apparently so abysmal that they pretty much had to shoot it entirely again. Now, it isn't particularly clear which shots are which, which ones are the old ones, which are the new ones, but the kind of ending, which we will spoil, suggests that it, that's one of the new endings. So, Brad Pitt's in this film, yes, yes he is, is about all I can say. Brad Pitt's a decent actor, he's been in some good films. In this, bland. If he was a crisp, he'd be ready salted in this. He's got a wife, he's got two kids, and they break rule number one of a zombie film. A zombie film, you need to kill people of the main cast to raise the stakes, add a kind of emotional um, investment. So, really starting from spoilers, the film opens in a pretty good scene in Philadelphia where Brad Pitt, his wife, his two kids um, get kind of sucked into the zombie apocalypse. And that's a pretty decent kind of amount of film working. There is some nice action, it's shot pretty well, it's a little bit shaky cam, but everything is these days. Um, and it's a nice kind of opening. The problem is then the film just really goes nowhere. Well, that's a lie, it doesn't go nowhere. Where it goes, it globe trots around the earth to absolutely zero emotional connection. And that's probably my main concern. And my biggest kind of disappointment about this film there is no connection really to any characters. Brad Pitt's off saving the day, and you know he's going to survive. He's Brad Pitt, and he basically has part from this film and dragged it from an absolute shambles to where it is now. So yeah, Brad Pitt's not going to die. His family are nice and safe in the middle of the ocean, so there's no concern. And not a single other character is looked in any further detail, given any characterization whatsoever. It really is, I'm Brad Pitt, follow me as I wander around the earth. So, yeah, it's, um, I'm trying to be nice about this film, but it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's ready, it's ready, it's ready salted. I'm going to stick with um, that analogy. But yeah, it's alright. The graphics at times are pretty woeful. Um, CGI helicopters are dreadful in this. Maybe that's why they spent all of the money. There is a weird scene. Um, oh, there's a couple of weird scenes. There's one weird scene where they're in South Korea. Not that you'd know, though, because it's pitch black. It's shot only as an exterior of an airplane on the inside of uh, like a bunker. And it's raining. So you get to see nothing of South Korea. That makes me suggest that perhaps that was one of the reshot scenes, as that would be quite easy to do. It looks like a soundstage and clearly is a soundstage. Uh, another one, which is probably one of the original shots, is maybe one of the shots you saw from the trailer, where all the zombies are crawling up the wall. What we find out in this part is Israel are prepared. They've got a weird planning system where if nine crazy people agree with something, the ten person's like, yeah, fair enough. Let's do it. So that, yeah, zombies are coming. So they build big bloody walls and everything's hunky-dory in Israel. They're letting people in. They're nice and safe. They've got like 100-foot walls. 
Except. Oh, so close. Until one lady decides to have a disco karaoke. She rocks out the microphone and starts singing the song and then, hey, as far as you know that, everyone's involved. Everyone's having a good time, singing around, and that attracts the zombies' attention. Through the wall? Yes. Zombies from miles away? Also, yes. What doesn't attract the attention is all the planes flying by and all the helicopters. That doesn't bother them. But a bit of Jewish karaoke, whoa, zombies do not like that in any way, shape, or form. And then really onto the end. The character or the characters. Brad Pitt. He leaves Israel and needs to find the nearest World Health Organization or CDC, Center of Disease Control, um, kind of building. Where is the nearest one? From Israel. Well, if you guessed Wales, you'd be correct. Wales is the nearest one. So they're in the sh uh, plane, and then it inevitably crashes. Brad Pitt gets a, a huge stab through his side, which then is not um, referenced at any point later on in this movie. Um, and they crash, luckily, quite near to the World Health Organization building. You know, Wales isn't a big place. It's not like it's a country or anything. They just like, they crash the plane like, oh... There it is. Oh, and we also know the way, funnily enough. That was quite lucky, wasn't it? So they go in there, Malcolm Tucker's there for some unbeknownst reason. Uh, and then the the scope just goes more rather more, uh, tiny 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 one building. And yeah, then it just turns into a generic zombie. Oh let's sneak around, can't be loud. No no point do they be clever. Um at one point um, Brad Pitt is saved by ringing on a phone. At no point do they think, you know what? What we could do to distract the zombies is find out where they are because they can see them all through the CCTV and then just start ringing the telephone numbers of the officers nearby to distract them and basically to herd them out of the area. Do they think that? No. Even when Brad Pitt is saved by a ringing telephone, he actually don't, doesn't continue any further. It seems a bit weird. And maybe that's a bit too clever. It'd be like, oh, that's quite a clever thing. But they don't seem to do it in this film. And at the end, Brad Pitt saves the world. Great. Through cholera. Cholera! So, so often our enemy, now our friend. So, overall, it's the scope that's the issue. It tries to be too wide. I mean, it's called World War Z. But because it's such a wide scope, you don't really feel any danger. You don't feel any connection to any of the characters. For me, zombie films work best kind of low-key. The original Night of the Living Dead. A group of people in a farmhouse. Dawn of the Dead. I Both of them, people in a mall. It's the kind of smaller scale that I like, and it's how people interact with each other, not how they interact with the zombies. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the weirder one. But I like zombie films where there isn't that many zombies in. And it's all about how man conflicts with his fellow man. When if they just work together, they can easily wipe it out. But no, man is stupid, man is greedy, man is selfish. And man will basically stab himself in the back to try and uh, beat somebody else. And it's those kind of stories that I do like um, in my zombie fiction. My zombie fiction I like is it's it's a... A mirror to society. How would we react? How we? How would you and your neighbour now get on if you were stuck together in the same room with very little food? The survivor mentality. That's what I want to see. But because they've picked this huge, huge scope, then you kind of lose that intimacy with the characters. And really, that's not the fault of the book. In the book, they. Yes, travel around the world, but they interview people and you get that kind of first-hand experience of what it was like in the zombie apocalypse. In this point, it's Brad Pitt's film and there's barely a scene where he's actually not, if not in it, he's talking in it over a walkie-talkie. And it's it's all about Brad Pitt and they don't really do anything kind of creative with it. So yeah, the film is just a big, meh, not awful, competently made, but not good in any way, shape or form. 
So if you have a choice to go and see this or renting Dawn of the Dead, either version is go rent Dawn of the Dead. They're much better films. And much better zombie films. And Brad Pitt's not in them with his luxurious hair. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't recommend it. It's not very good, but it's not very bad. So you can't even just kind of, even if you just sat around with a few mates with a few beers, you wouldn't get much fun out of it because it's just a pretty dull film. So yeah, if you've seen World War Z, let me know what your opinions were. Am I wrong? Am I right? Yes, I'm, I'm right. I know I'm right. But hey, let us know. Um, I'm on Twitter, at the door, and I'm on here. Post a message, comments, like, dislike, entirely up to you. So cheers everyone for watching. Thank you very much, and uh, good night.